Hey everybody, thanks for uh, tuning in, checking out the material. Uh, today I wanted to talk to you guys about uh, the Club Space Fish show that Gigi did in Orlando, Florida. I believe that was on November 18th, 1991. <clears throat> um, Gigi and I had already done the Carnival of Excess recordings at this point. He had come to my place in July uh, of that uh that summer, so in November, it was a couple, couple months uh, after that. Uh, the Space Fish show was interesting. Um, Gigi had been talking to me, and he, he had told me about them rehearsing with Didi Ramon. So at that point, he was telling me that Didi was going to be uh, at the show and playing on the, on the bill and doing these gigs with him. Um, as it turns out, that didn't materialize, but... I'm sure you've all seen the rehearsal footage of uh, Dee Dee jamming with those guys and, and all that. But uh, anyways, I made up this flyer here for the show. And as you can see, it, it says featuring Dee Dee Ramone. That never happened. Um, but oh well. Uh, so anyways, um, you know, like I said, Gigi and I had been in, in contact. We, you know, we at this point, we were talking pretty much two times a week, um, depending on if he needed to chat about the recordings or whatever. And uh, so he was keeping me posted on all the shows and, and uh, how things were going. Um, so the night of the Space Fish show, and, and Space Fish was a little club in downtown Orlando. Nothing really spectacular about it. It was just another place. It wasn't necessarily in the nicest of areas, if I remember correctly. And, um, you know, uh, there was a pool hall across the street from it and uh, I don't know uh, nothing special about it uh, so the night of the show we get there and I was with Razor and we had to park I don't know maybe a block away from from the venue so we get there and, and you know it's it's the typical GG pre-show thing you know uh, fans are hanging around and all that and I noticed they had a Disclaimer, you know, before you went into the venue saying, you know, by entering, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, if you're going to a GG show, you kind of should know what to expect. And um, if you weren't going to it and just happened to be in there, yikes. Anyways, um, so this particular night, I don't know what leg of the, you know, how many shows into the tour they were on, but... Um, this was the MJs with, uh, Gigi's brother, Bill Weber and Dino, uh, on drums. <clears throat> and, um, so Gigi and I are talking, uh, before the show a little bit, just, you know, chatting about, uh, what's going on with the recordings. And I had brought a cassette, uh, with me that night. In addition to a video, I was going to videotape the show cause I wanted to include some of that footage in the documentary. I was doing, which would eventually become the Carnival of Excess video, which you could see for free here on my channel on YouTube. Um, but anyways, uh, so I had also brought the mixes of, we were going to, I was going to do a, uh, my first seven inch on Vinyl Retentive, which was my label name before Punk. Um, and it was going to have Carmelita and Watch Me Kill as the B-side. So I thought, cool, you know, I'll bring these and, and you know, let Gigi check them out because, uh, you know, we did different mixes but they were real close to the same they weren't nothing too terribly different but um so anyways Gigi were like cool after the show we'll get together and da 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 okay fine so showtime comes and <clears throat> you know Gigi takes the stage and of course he you know all he was wearing was a, a hoodie uh so he was naked um and then he loses the hoodie and the band starts and, you know, there's a, it was interesting because some of the people who were attending that night were, uh, was Frank Mullen, who took the classic Gigi photo, which you can see right here. Um, that's been around everywhere. And then also that night was uh, Chris Kramer and Susie and uh, um, their crew uh, also accompanied them, which Chris was the, Chris and Susie's place was the place where uh, Chris was the guy who did Gigi's rat tattoo. So you've probably seen some of that footage and some of the things I've released over the years and 
whatever. But so there was, you know, Florida contingent was uh, was there to see Gigi, the fans. So there was a pretty good, pretty good crowd for a Gigi show that was anxious to see him. Um, show starts. One song in, you know, Gigi's bust a bottle over his head, so he's bleeding everywhere and he's running around per usual. You know, Gigi's doing what Gigi does. And uh, second second song in, I think it was Bite It, You Scum. I can't remember. Uh, but, you know, then he does what he's known for. And, um, you know, it just continues on like that going on. And I'm, I'm videotaping the show. There's two people video taping me and then also somebody from Gigi's uh, camp. Um, I don't know if that was Evan. I can't remember. But anyways, uh, so Gigi's doing his thing. Songs are going on. Third song comes on. Uh, he, you know, he keeps doing what he does. <laughs> and uh, this time he ran out there and he I think it was this song, was this song or the next one. He run, he takes a chair, he opens the door, he's naked, bloody, and covered in everything you can imagine. He takes a chair, whips it at the people in the pool hall, and screams at him. Um, they, you know, they probably hadn't ever seen anything like that. You know, a, a naked guy covered in blood, throwing chairs at him and pissing him off a little bit. So I'm guessing they were the ones that ended up calling the cops uh, <laughs> because the cops eventually came. Gigi went on for a couple more songs. And like I said, I'm videotaping. So the set's over. We, you know, the cops weren't there at this point. Um... So Gigi and the band go in the back room. I follow them back there. My head's in the video, find, the, the viewfinder, and I, I didn't know what was going on behind me, but the cops were there. And, uh, you know, Gigi's trying to put on some pants and whatnot. And uh, so they go, you, you, meaning me and Gigi, against the wall. And I'm like, oh, man, this is a drag. Because I was borrowing the video camera I was using. I didn't have one. So here I am up against the wall with Gigi, uh, you know, and they're both patting us down. They confiscate my video camera and the tape that was in it. They confiscate the audio cassette that I had in my pocket of the two mixes uh, for the single. Um, they were basically holding us there. And I was freaking out. I thought I was going to end up going to jail. And I kept going, why am I going <laughs> to be taken in? I didn't do anything. I'm just videotaping it. And there was this one cop there who, who just didn't, he didn't like, the whole scene, didn't like me, didn't like Gigi, and he was just in my case, man. He just, he was, you know, right up screaming, you know, whatever, and I kept trying to plead with him, look, I really just need the, the camera back. This is borrowed, and I was in art school, and I was borrowing it from a friend of mine, and, you know, they wanted to impound and take the whole camera. Finally, a, a, a detective it came over who, he was a little more reasonable, and, you know, what, what's going on here? Because the cop was getting pretty red with me, and I was keeping my cool because I didn't want to. I didn't know if I was going to jail at this point or not, and I didn't want to further escalate. They already had Gigi and Dino in handcuffs in the back, and um, <clears throat> they they did take them to jail that night. Uh, so, anyways, this detective he decides, well, okay, whatever. Just they took the tape, they gave me back the video camera, which I was thankful for. Um, you know, they were trying to get get this whole thing wrapped up and take those two guys to jail, get rid of the crowd, and, and uh, you know, move on with the evening. In fact, here's a little snippet of some of the crowd reactions uh, right now. I wanted to play this for you guys. Hey, do you, do you feel that this is censorship? This is a tragedy of justice. G.G. Allen is what our First Amendment rights are all about. No shit, man. I honestly, truthfully you. think G.G. Allen's what Thomas Jefferson had in mind. You're damn right. I know it's true. Of course it is. <laughs> Do you like Do you like Gigi Allen? It sounded pretty good. <laughs> Be honest with you, his band sounded real tight. Hey, bitch, do you like Gigi Allen? Yeah. Hey, let me have hey, the camera her, before they before they take it. Okay. I can't believe you. So you know, it was a, it was a pretty crazy evening at that point. You know, after Gigi got arrested, things kind of unraveled and people were freaking out a little bit. And the cops are wondering what's going on. There's blood everywhere. The lights are broken. The club owners are being interrogated by the cops, and it, it's pretty it's a pretty weird scene at this point. Um, so this rolls on for you know whatever half hour, forty five minutes, whatever, and things are calming down now. 
everybody's dispersed. Razor and I were still there. We were kind of just talking to some of the band members a little bit, wondering what was next and all that. And um, so it was time for us to go. And uh, there were still some people across the street that Gigi threw that chair at that were pretty pissed off still. And they weren't, they weren't happy with the crowd, the event, the people that were there, and, and Gigi, you know, letting them have it verbally. So as Razor and I were walking to our car, I kind of, in my peripheral vision, noticed, you know, somebody's behind us. And I said, Razor, walk fast. Just walk faster. So we just started walking fast, and so did they. And next thing you know, we're in a full sprint going for the car. And I just like in a movie scene, I had my hands in my pockets trying to get the keys out. And then fortunately for, you know, I was able to get the keys, get it in the you know door. It wasn't remote. So we didn't have the push button things at this point. So got it in there, got the key in the ignition, turned it and we got the hell out of there before. But as, as we were going away, I just see the, the cinder block pieces just smashing. They were winging cinder block pieces at the car. Fortunately we didn't, you know, nothing happened to us or the car. Uh, I think they might have messed with the the MJ's van that night or something. I can't be for sure of that. But, you know, it was, it was a pretty crazy evening overall and uh, just another show. But the interesting thing after that is they extradited Gigi back to jail into Michigan. So, um, and you can hear, here's the letter Gigi uh, wrote to me once he got back up there. You can see that... Uh, you know, it was kind of a drag, uh, you know, that, but inevitable um, that they were going to catch up to him eventually. But that's how Gigi ended up getting extradited back to Michigan, you know, when he was on parole, you know, and the, his parole officer let him out to do this tour. Um, but I guess he just crossed the line and they had to get him, you know, back up there and uh, everything unfolded then as we all know it. So that's my little uh, story of the club Space Fish. Gigi got arrested and extradited. Dino got arrested. I didn't, um, but my tape was taken. Both tapes, video and audio, were taken and confiscated, never to be seen again. After Gigi died, I, I got a hold of the Orlando Police Department, and they just basically laughed at me and said that, you know, that tape will never see the light of day. And, you know, get the hell out of here and go, pound sand somewhere so anyways if you like what you heard give me a like give me a subscribe i need the subscriptions i have a 5,000 goal so help me out a little bit if you can check out some of my other videos about gg and tiny tim and sleepy little beef i'm going to be uploading as the weeks roll on here some interesting stories how we made carnival of excess and tiny tim's prisoner of love and roots with sleepy little beef got stories about abdul the butcher that i was working with and Dwayne peters uh, all kinds of stuff so Check it out. Leave me a comment. And if you're at the show, man, I'd love to hear from you. It was uh, real interesting. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, thanks a lot, you guys, for the support. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.